If you want to get better results from your AI agents or your large language models, you need to know about Context Rock, what to do about it. Plus, I also have two MCP servers that are personally made, which can help to counter this very problem as well. Now, look at this drawing that I've made here. We have AI agent A and AI agent B. Now, AI agent A doesn't have any context, completely blank. There's nothing in its memory, in its head, nothing at all. But on AI agent B, we do have context. So this might be a series of questions that we've been asking it. Maybe we've been you know, asking it to do research, using random tools, MCP tools, whatever it may be. And this is building up context over time. Now let's use a real life example here as well. Let's just assume these two people have the same exact skill level, same credentials, everything. Now out of these two people, who do you think is gonna perform better with this task? This guy here or this guy here? And I think most people would choose this guy right here. There's nothing on his mind. He can just focus on the work and focus on a task and do you know the best to his ability. From this graph here, we can see the drastic performance changes just based on the input length increasing. And this is also including some of the best models in the world that we have and utilize right now, today. And if you wanna read the full study on this, I'll have the link down below as well. So how would we make our AI agents in NA10, for example, perform better avoiding the context rot? Well, here's a little simple solution. So I do have just a random Google Sheets here. Okay, so this is just giving random tweet data and you know, there's probably, yeah, 17 items, there we go, okay? Now, I don't wanna send 17 items to my AI agent. That's too much information, there's too many things going on. Let's just assume, in this case, right, I only wanted to send one based on the latest date, based on the latest tweet. So rather than me sending all 17 items over, I could just create some JavaScript code right here. Now, if I click on execute step, this is actually going to output only the latest time posted and the latest tweet. I don't wanna be sending all of this information to the AI agent if I can help it. I want it to be as minimal as possible. So by the time my AI agent receives the data, it can focus on that sole task very reliably as well. And this is just simple JavaScript code, which I made with NA10 boy, which is just a little extension that I made for NA10 as well. And I've also made two MCP servers here. So I have, can you reflect for agentic coding? So this is going to be for your curses, for your windsurf, Claude code, things like that. And we also have reflection, which I've just made for everyday use, general purpose, and you can just access this in Claude Desktop. So let's see this reflection MCP in action as well. So right here, I've done a search on just random crypto news, and I've also just asked it to make a 300 word story. And then I can just say, reflect on the context, and we should get some tool uses to the MCP server. So here we are right here. So we can see that you asked for crypto research, which I thoroughly completed then immediately switch to a 300 word story. So this is in its context. Now, just imagine if we had a conversation with Claude over the course of like one hour, maybe after like 50 different messages. Now we can actually determine what's in its context, whether or not it's actually able to perform the task accurately at the time based on the query that we're sending. But the great thing about reflection is that we can also reflect on the story it's just made. So I'm just gonna say reflect on the story you just made and let's see what it thinks about now. And anytime it's asking if you wanna use a tool, you can just click allow always, and that'll just make it, you know, not ask you ever again. And then reflects on what is created and then judges it with brutal honesty, as you can see right here. So we can see here as well, would I do it the same way if everything was at stake? Absolutely not. And then from here, this is when we can start to perfect and refine and make our stories or our blogs or whatever tasks, you know, that we're actually making at the time and improve them a lot more. And this is acting like a pattern interrupt. So rather than Claude always agreeing and saying everything's amazing and you're absolutely right, it's going to interrupt it and have to be brutally honest about what it's doing at the time. And now for our agentic coding, we can also reflect on certain files. So I could just say reflect on tools dot typescript send that off we'll have to wait for it to go through a few little things and then there we go we do get the reality check required so it's going to go through that file kind of determine whether or not the implementation was good bad give its response and let us know how we should improve this further as well which is going to be really important because sometimes you know claude or cursor or windsurf you know, these agents just think they're doing the best job and they need to be interrupted, you know, sometimes as well, just to ensure that it's actually performing as we want them to perform. And then we can see right here, we have the single most important fix is just remove the console error debug logging on lines 
405. And as you can see, it's just recorded the assessment as well, which is then placed directly into this JSON file. And we can see the reflection or reflecting on tools.typescript file structure implementation right here. This is the brand new one, which has just been added. And this allows the agent to then reference the files later on, reference the previous reflections, see the current reflection. And then obviously when the status is complete, boom, delete it, and then we're done. And then in terms of the context, we can just say something as simple as reflect on your context. Now, again, this is a very small um, chat, right? I've only sent one query, but we can see right here as well, it's gonna be doing a context check. So if I press control and R, we can see what it's going through right here as well. So this is essentially just like sending a prompt to it, okay? But it's great because it's a pattern interrupt. It will actually have to kind of like stop and think about what it's doing. And in this case, it's giving the green light that my context is actually really helping here. So this is a good time and a good chance for us to continue conversing with Claude code right here and continue building based on what we wanna build. And I'll have both of these MCP servers for you to install as well. It's just a simple five second install. But if you do wanna use it, be in the description below. And yeah, it should help you out a lot. And if you wanna take your learning a lot more seriously, feel free to join my school community. If not, I'll see you in the next video.